हेलो फ्रेंड्स वी आर वंस अगेन हियर फॉर अवर नेक्स्ट सेशन ऑफ स्टीयर सीरीज व्हिच इज कंसेप्चुअलाइज बाय आवर बिलवेड टीचर डॉक्टर वाय के अमडेकर सर एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्पीक ऑन इंडिकेशंस एंड इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ ब्लड शुगर इन पीडियाट्रिक प्रैक्टिस फॉर एनी पेशेंट क्रिटिकल इवैल्यूएशन ऑफ एयरवे ब्रीदिंग सर्कुलेशन डिसेबिलिटी एंड uh exposure that's what is a secondary as a primary assessment we talk about in als to complete that a b c d e perhaps two more factors are important that is t and g that is temperature and glucose those are as important as the first four or five of those components glucose evaluation is another viral vital parameter unlike adults in pediatric practice hypoglycemia is much more common than hyperglycemia in sick child when do we check blood glucose in a pediatric patient is for all sick patients brought to the emergency room or pediatric intensive care any patient who deteriorates in the ward a routine monitoring in a sick patient in the icu or pic we do check sugars periodically monitoring of a known hypo or hypoglycemic child who is hospitalized or even on the opd basis sometime for medical fitness we do include it many times in a opd basis or for any school event or sometimes or rather many times it's for the pre op checkup not to forget before giving certain drugs like say nowadays we are using propranolol for hemangioma prior to that we do check uh, sugar level to avoid any blunted response to beta blockers why do we monitor sugar another very important question both hypo as well as hyperglycemia in pediatrics can be detrimental in a short term or long term in case of hypoglycemia we know sugar is a most important substrate for the brain and any hypoglycemia can have severe effect so for brain utilize sugar as its primary kind of a, a metabolism second could be to some extent maybe ketones in a dire situation so decrease in the blood sugar levels can have cellular failure can lead to seizure and long term irreversible damages to the brain it can also have effect on the heart giving rise to uh, increased st stimulation of the autonomic system tachycardia and ischemic injury adrenergic gland ad ad adrenal gland also have recurrent hypoglycemia can blunt adrenal stress hormones and in case of hypoglycemia it can lead to muscle weakness and occasional rhabdomyolysis on the musculoskeletal system hyperglycemia has got much more effect in acute as well as chronic in acute scenario you know hyperglycemia will lead to glycosuria polyuria and loss of electrolytes and electrolyte imbalances in a given patient in a short term it can also lead to confusion blurred vision and fatigue and in a chronic case like in case of poorly managed diabetic patient a first appearance diabetic patient it can have brain effect on the brain which may have high risk for stroke and dementia it can have retinopathy it can have cardiomyopathy coronary stroke coronary heart disease stroke and hypertension or peripheral arterial disease it can lead to neuropathy nephropathy and hepatopathy in case of diabetics who are poorly managed in a long term how do we collect samples for blood sugar there are two ways in a emergency situation as a point of care test we collect sugar from the capillary sample which will be analyzed on a glucometer and in a proper icu or kind of a routine in in ipd session we collect venous blood sample which is to be analyzed in the blood uh, in the lab with a various uh, lab methods in emergency we use the glucometer in a planned situation we use the venous sample in the lab in a planned situation we do if it is to be hyperglycemic to be monitored we do fasting and postprandial samples there are few fallacies we need to understand when we check it on the glucometer when we check the capillary sample essentially it's a mix of arterial and venous capillary so significant amount of blood is pre tissue sample where sugar is not being consumed and in that case the sugars will be slightly higher as compared to the venous sample which is post tissue sample where sugar is already consumed by the tissue so difference can be as high as 10 to 15% when the capillary blood glucose is about 15% higher than the same time collected venous blood glucose 
if the blood sample collected from vein is not immediately analyzed and sent to the lab and analyzed after one hour two hour then every one hour delay of the sugar sample uh, measurement can have drop in the sugar levels of five to seven percent at the same time we also need to understand the effect of hyperglycemia on a simultaneous kind of measurement we know pseudo hyponatremia in case of dk patient because of high blood sugars and that's because of certain measurement fallacies in the modern day when we have iron specific electrode measured for electrolytes this effect of confounding is lost but in a conventional measure yes we do have that and then the correction factor of sodium for sodium is to be used which is about 1.6 milliequivalent for every 100 milligram above 100 basic of sugar that is what is to be taken uh, to correct the sodium levels and i'm sure in my electrolyte sample i have already electrolyte uh, talk i already covered this issue how to interpret the glucose beyond neonatal period the sugar levels are nor same as normal sugar level are same as adult that is fasting of 80 and postprandial of 120 i'm sure these levels keep changing by the international guideline but this is something which is standard accepted in all bedside or point of care measures in case of new and numbers the numbers are slightly different so at birth up to date mentioned the level as low as 25 can be acceptable which i'm sure it's not safe and none of us are very safe with those numbers but up to date definitely mentioned that first four hours up to 25 4 to 60 24 hour up to 35 24 hours to 48 hours up to 60 and after 48 hours it's 70 thus those are the numbers quoted in up to date but what nnf uh, guideline mentioned any sugar below 50 has to be taken critically and has to be corrected and the target correction of correction should be at least about 70 milligram per, uh, per deciliter now as a general rule sugar below 50 milligram per deciliter is hypoglycemia and sugar above 150 milligram per deciliter is to be taken as hyperglycemia and we try to keep those numbers between this range how to know long term levels of sugar so sometimes you get a patient of a hyperglycemia and you don't know whether it's a transient body response or it's a long term sugar and this is where the role of glycosylated hemoglobin will come into picture this is nothing but irreversible binding of glucose to hemoglobin which can be measured up to three months and why it is so because you know the rbc lifespan is about three to 90 days to 120 days so obviously you can measure only up to those 90 days so this gives you average blood sugar over the duration again one need to understand this is contributed to the extent of 50 percent in what has happened in last one month and remaining for 50 percent over previous two months so we need to use it in that perspective any number below 5.7 percent of glycosylated hemoglobin is normal which represents blood sugar below 115 approximately any number above 6.5 is to be taken as a diabetic range which tells you it is above 140 most of the times confounders of sugar are equally important so any physiological stressful response which will invoke the stress hormones that is cortisol, catecholamine, glucagon which will transiently increase the blood sugar levels and at times in a critical scenario we have seen levels going up to 400, 500 this is not essentially a diabetic range this could be a transient increase and which can be treated accordingly so if it is borderline one may just kind of treat the underlying cause but if it is significant more than say 200, 250 then we may use maybe reducing the infusions of the sugar or sometimes even using insulin to get them back below the levels why it is important it's important to keep it below because the renal glucose uh, kind of a threshold above with above that plasma glucose the kidneys will start showing throwing sugar out that is approximately 180 and any level above that will cause glycosuria polyuria electrolyte losses so that level need to be kept and there is there is to be a very long debate what should be the tight glycemic control in case of uh, kind of a critical change in the icu and now we know that tight glycemic index or kind of control is not of use sometimes it causes hypoglycemia in a given patient which can be far more detrimental than this transient hyperglycemia so what is as on today 
we are not on the tight glycemic control but yes we try to keep it between 100 to 200 milligram in a critical child at the same time any exogenously given steroids for any critical condition or any kind of a physiological any kind of a pathology can have transient increase in the sugar level by virtue of its steroid effects so friends to summarize about glucose evaluation and, and kind of interpretation, blood sugar evaluation is a vital parameter in sick child apart from airway breathing, circulation, disability and exposure and temperature and saturation, not to forget that one more vital parameter. Every sick child brought to emergency room, PICU or every sudden deterioration in ward, blood sugar level evaluation is desirable. In pediatric patients, Hypoglycemic brain injury is a long-term irreversible damage which is preventable by keen monitoring. Hypo as well as hyperglycemia should be aggressively treated to avoid direct and indirect damage to the tissue. Thank you very much.